Okay, this is a size 10 uh, F39 uh, 39 series actuator. Uh, the significance of the F series actuators is on the bottom of the actuator, it has a uh, female uh, input shaft. Uh, with the old, older style uh, actuators, has a uh, male output shaft, as you can see here in the video. Uh, Internally, there's no differences as far as the O-ring changes. Uh, so we're gonna disassemble this size 10 actuator and uh, show where all the O-rings and stuff are. So we'll start uh, by removing the end caps. By removing the end caps, what we wanna do is we wanna take the four uh, end screws out on this end. And then we'll remove the four end screws on this end and that will um, uh, relieve the end caps of the, the body of the actuator. All right, this is a uh, double acting, no springs in the actuator. So no um, no special tools needed to uh, remove these end caps. Just need an Allen head screw. Uh, we got a pneumatic gun here that we take them out with and we'll go ahead and uh, remove the four screws on this end cap. <laughs> Alright, once these four screws are removed, uh, the end cap should uh, slide, slip right off of the actuator. Uh, sometimes on the larger models, uh, you may need to get a little small screwdriver or something and, um, and, and get it started. Alright, flip it over. We'll remove the screws, other four screws on the other end cap. This end cap has the travel stops in it. Uh, on the newer models, the older models won't have travel stops. These these uh, screws right here, these are the travel stop screws uh, on the newer models for the open travel stop and for the closed travel stop. So, all right, we'll, uh, same thing, uh, pull the uh, end cap off of it. All right, once we have both end caps off, you can see the pistons. So we'll um, set it up on its side here on the end take a uh, wrench and we'll rotate the, the uh, shaft on the actuator. You want to rotate it in a counterclockwise fashion here and that's going to push the uh, pistons outward. So once you get it um, twisted around outward and you should be able to grab the piston and pull the piston out of the actuator on both sides. Alright, got the pistons out. Inside the actuator now, all we have is the um, the shaft, the output shaft. All right, go ahead. All right, so what we want to do now is we want to remove the output shaft. So in order to do that, we take a small uh, screwdriver. There's a little ring that's around the actuator. Just get it started out and up and work it around. It's almost like a little key ring uh, holder. Get that up, and we'll pull the ring off. And then there's a uh, washer here on top. You just shift, push the uh, the uh, shaft right out the bottom of the uh, actuator housing. All right, um, once the actuator is disassembled, uh, some of the big key things, uh, especially on an actuator that's been in service, this here is a, a new actuator, but um, is to make sure that the uh, internals of the housings are clean. Um, want to make sure on the pistons that uh, these O-rings right here, these will be removed on the repair. We want to make sure there's no uh, contamination or anything on the end caps. We want to clean those up real well uh, prior to reassembly. All right, after we get it disassembled, we want to start uh, cleaning the, the, the actuator body and stuff up, getting it ready for reassembly. Uh, we're going to take a rag and we'll remove all the old grease uh, out of the actuator. This may take some uh, cleaning fluids, uh, possibly alcohol or something like that if it's uh, got uh, some type of water contamination and stuff up inside of it. But you want to clean your uh, actuator housing out real good, get it real good and clean. Uh, make sure there's no uh, scuffs or uh, gouges or anything in the body where the seals uh, ride. Uh, these will cause O-rings to go uh, bad quicker, 
So um, want to make sure the surfaces inside of here on the bore of the body is uh, in good condition. All right, once the body's clean, we want to remove all the O-rings and, and bearings on the, the uh, output shaft. So we'll take a, a small pick or screwdriver and uh, take the lower O-ring off. And then there's a guide band that's on the bottom of the actuator. We want to we want to get that that off the actuator. So it should be removed fairly easy. So once we get uh, those things off, the uh, shaft is uh, free of O-rings and bearings. Uh, would recommend doing the same thing on the shaft as we did with the body is uh, clean it up and uh, make sure it's good and clean. So you can use a, a, a wash tank or a rags or alcohol, something like that to get it get the shaft cleaned up. Um, there is a uh, seal and washer in the body on the top, top portion of the body here. There's a black uh, O-ring inside the uh, top of the pinion. There's also um, a washer on the inside uh, both of those will need to be removed. So we'll take an, uh, a pick or a small screwdriver and go in and uh, get this O-ring out to the body. All right, we've got the O-ring out and then the same thing with the washer. We should be able to just uh, um, either nudge it a little bit and uh, get this washer out of the body. Okay, so now we've got the, we've removed the washer and the O-ring out of the body. So the, the body's clean and uh, all the perishable parts are removed from it. Um, there is a uh, seal and washer in the body on the top, top portion of the body here. There's a black uh, O-ring inside the uh, top of the pinion. There's also um, a washer on the inside. Uh, both of those will need to be removed. So we'll take an, uh, a pick or a small screwdriver and go in and uh, get this O-ring out to the body. All right, we've got the O-ring out and then the same thing with the washer. We should be able to just uh, um, either nudge it a little bit and uh, get this washer out of the body okay so now we've got the we've removed the washer and the o-ring out of the body so the, the body's clean and uh, all the perishable parts are removed from it so now we want to remove the o-rings from the pistons and clean them so we'll remove the um, o-ring the main o-ring off of the uh, the piston the same way, we'll take a pick or a small small screwdriver and just pull the O-ring off. And we'll do the second one the same way. And then once those are removed, we want to clean the, um, the O-ring grooves in here where the O-ring goes. You want to make sure those are good and clean. Uh, the teeth where uh, the, the um, piston rides on the pinion or the output shaft. There's also a uh, O-ring and a guide band inside the hole here. They'll need to be removed. So same same status. You want to remove the O-ring. And the guide band. Now you want to pay attention to how those came out of there. As you can see in here, uh, there's a, just one groove, but the guide band was actually on the, the, the T side of the, um, the piston and the O-ring was on the, the back side. So when you put those back together, uh, you want to make sure that uh, they go back in the piston in the same order. Uh, and the other piston is the same way here. You can see the guide band, the yellow guide band is in the front and uh, the O-ring's in the back. Now we've got uh, the pistons completely uh, disassembled from the perishable items. We got the main main O-ring uh, off the uh, the piston, and also the uh, guide band 
or the guide rod, uh, guide band, and O-ring out of the pistons. Uh, these will just need to be cleaned up, same as with the body and uh, the output shaft or pinion. Want to make sure that uh, they're good and clean and free of any type of contamination before reassembly. Okay, we've got the the um, pistons here cleaned up. One th one note I want to make is, even though these uh, pistons look the same, uh, they are different in regards to. Uh, one piston is a uh, air side piston and one one side's not. Uh, the easy way uh, to tell that is if you look at the, the uh, rotate the piston up and look at this hole here. This hole here goes all the way through uh, the piston and the guide rod. Uh, this is the air side uh, piston. Uh, the other piston here, you notice it, you can see the guide rod uh, in the hole. So this is the non-air side piston. Uh, this will be uh, important when you're putting it back together. Uh, if these pistons get put in the, the wrong direction, uh, the actuator will not work. So uh, we'll um, note that uh, again uh, when we uh, reassemble the actuator. So now we need to get the O-rings and the, the guide bands out of the, um, the end caps. So we'll start with this end cap here. Uh, there's an O-ring seal on the outside of it here. Uh, that keeps contamination and also seals uh, the air off on double acting. Uh, inside this hole here, you've got an O-ring. Uh, same situation, you've got an O-ring and a uh, guide band in here. You want to make sure when you uh, take those apart that uh, you get them back in in the same orientation. So uh, this guide band here with a, a pick, it's a lot easier to get the guide band out. We'll get the guide band out of the other side. This side here only has a guide band in it. Uh, pull them up. We'll get a pair of needle nose pliers and just kind of twist them a little bit. They'll just pop right out of the groove. All right. Now this end cap here is the one without the travel stops on it. So uh, we've got all the seals out of it. We'll move over here to the uh, the side with the uh, the travel stops. Uh, same same situation. You've got a um, outer O-ring here for the seal of the end cap to the body, and you've got on this side you've got a uh, rubber O-ring on the outside portion of the groove, and then you have a uh, guide band. These guys' bands have a gap in them. Um, so when you start getting them out, if you'll start where where the uh, guide band ends, it's a little easier to start, start getting them out. Same thing, we'll take the new nose pliers and do a little slight rotation on them and uh, pull those right out. All right, now at this point, we've got all of our perishable items uh, uh, out of our end caps. 